April 1986, Chernobyl, the world's most devastating nuclear disaster, just occurred. A massive reactor meltdown. It will cause billions in damages. Pripyat to be evacuated and hundreds dead. The area remains uninhabited to this day. But our story only starts in the aftermath a few months later. In a city called Sredlovsk, halfway across Russia, at the time this was an important Soviet shipping hub, however, recently the computer managing the railway had been sporadically crashing, bringing the train yard to a halt when it happens. The man in charge, Sergei, had just installed a new training cargo routing computer. It uses an SM-1800, the Soviet equivalent to the Intel 8080. But for some reason, without explanation, sometimes it just stops working, and no one is able to solve the issue. The system works perfectly during testing. Finally, Sergei gets sick of being woken up in the middle of the night, so he decides to investigate and get to the bottom of the issue. Eventually, he realized the crashes follow a pattern, and he could predict exactly when the next one would happen. It turns out they only occur when living cows were transported from western Russia and northern Ukraine to a slaughterhouse there in Sredlovsk, which is weird because this doesn't happen when cows from Kazakhstan are, well, transiting. Also, why are they transporting cows from Ukraine to the middle of Russia? There's no shortage in Kazakhstan. So Sergei developed a theory. The incoming train carts might be radioactive. The problem is testing this theory. The Soviet government did not allow him to own a Geiger counter, which you need to detect radiation. Luckily, by sharing a bottle of vodka with some soldiers stationed at the train yard, he managed to convince them to use their detectors. When they measure the train carts, they find the radiation levels are orders of magnitudes higher than expected. And the SM-1800 was in a building close to those tracks. But why does this radioactivity matter? How does it crash a computer? Well, one important part of a computer is its memory. It's where we store the state of the program, used to cache the values, and even used to store the programs themselves. This is built from many, many memory cells. Each cell contains either a 1 or a 0, represented by the voltage in the memory cell. So by injecting energy into a cell, we can change what it is storing. It so happens that radioactivity are just differently charged particles. So if radioactivity hits a memory cell, the contents might change, a bit flip. This is a soft error, today we are fairly good at mitigating this, and if we can't, the operating system will just shut down if too many happen. But back in the day we were just not. So clearly the Soviet cows were radioactive enough to flip bits in the SM-1800, causing it to crash whenever they were on site just requiring a restart of the computer to reset. But that's not how they actually fixed the issue. More on that later on. Because to this day, bit flips remain a very big issue. We even have to be careful with the materials we build computers from. Most things are slightly radioactive. This caused issues back in the 70s before we knew about this. That is the same time when we were developing DRAM, the type of memory that is used to this day in your computer. The first iteration suffered from a lot of errors because the material itself caused bit flips. Even today, that very, very slight radioactivity in the circuit continued to be a big issue for chipmaker supply chains. We actually refine the sand we build chips from. It's a bit like uranium refining where you attempt to remove the non-wanted materials from the uranium to make it more potent. With sand, it's the same thing, but opposite. You attempt to remove as much uranium and other radioactive materials in the silicon sand as possible. In modern chips, the silicon must be 99.9999999999% pure. And this process is extremely expensive, so computers have created a multi-billion fancy sand industry. But bit flips can happen for other reasons than just radioactivity. In fact, early Google was almost killed by this back in 2000. In the early days, 
Google's search index powered Yahoo. But when that deal was being negotiated, Google's index was frozen since five months back. If you went to Google search, it was like taking a time machine. For Google, this was catastrophic. They were desperate for this deal. Without the money from it, Google would likely burn through its remaining funds and go bankrupt. So they gathered their best engineers in the war room to solve the issue. After five days of constant debugging and not fixing the bug, they started to suspect it was not a logical error, but a purely physical problem. So of course, like any engineer would, they inspected the pure binary content of the index. What they discover is that a lot of zeros should be ones and vice versa. Google's index machine's memory had somehow become corrupted. As a cash-strapped startup, Google had been buying mostly cheap hardware. No NVIDIA GPUs here, almost going to Craigslist and buying whatever is available there. But there are no radioactive cows in Google's data center. At least I hope so. It turns out that cosmic background radiation can also flip bits. Of course, this is more of an issue for spacecraft, which is why you use more redundancy and special kinds of memory up there. You use something called error correcting code memory, a type of memory built in a way that makes it immune to single bit errors and capable of detecting two bit errors. Back in the early 2000s, this kind of memory was really expensive. Google had chosen not to use it, and they wouldn't start using it for many years yet. They just implemented software fixes to do error correction in software instead. And of course also spending a lot of resources tracking down memory corruption. As you do of course. But don't put your computer in a lead container just yet. This kind of error is extremely rare. If you have a problem with crashing, it's more likely that the software is faulty. Or even that there is some manufacturing defect. Faulty hardware is a bigger cause of error than the universe conspiring against us. But if you have a few hundreds of gigabytes of memory and suffer from crashing, maybe do consider using ECC memory. Although, probably fix your software before then. But what about the Soviets? They certainly did not solve their issue by using ECC memory. Arguably, it wouldn't help anyways in case too many bits are flipped. So their ingenious solution was to simply wait. The crashes stopped occurring as radiation levels dropped to normal over time. As for Sergei, he realized the Soviets were mixing the radiation tainted West Russian and Ukrainian meat with uncontaminated meat from the rest of the country, which caused him to promptly make preparations to leave. Which he did. Though this story is from a blog post made in 2010 and I have not been able to track down who this Sergei guy actually is. But that's it for the video. Thank you for watching.